it sits right on the fence between bread and cake. It was eaten with both savoury and sweet toppings. Some recipes say this should be enjoyed with things like crab butter. We're simply opting for a rich jam. Hey, what's up guys and welcome to Tasting into Burner, where today we are going to turn this little guy into butter. This is something that people have been doing since at least the 15th century, but that was omitted when our Marie Antoinette brioche called for it. First, we need to clean and peel them, and we're doing that wearing gloves, so that our hands will still smell nice afterwards. I don't know, I just think the man likes to have nice smelling hands. Now, you might notice that we're using prawns here, where we said it should be crab butter. This was mistranslated in our original video. The historical recipe is actually for crayfish butter, but crayfish are really hard to get in the UK. We're not buying them brined or in bulk. So we are using king prawns, which are much easier to get and just as nice. Storing the actual meat of the prawns for a lovely laksa, which will sadly be made off camera. As for this recipe, we are interested in the shells. Wasting animal parts is something people rarely did in the olden times, and I try to avoid that here as well. Now we need to grind up the shells, or carapaces if you are using crayfish, using a mortar and pestle. That is, until you realise you're not being your own channel today, but channeling huh, a cool modern New Yorker, allowing us to use the blender. Put the heads and shells in the blender and blitz. Give it a bit of assistance should it need it. Keep going until everything is reduced to a rough paste. Now we're going to weigh our paste, making note of how much we have to work with. The 15 prawns yielded 215 grams of paste. Let's put this aside while we go and make our butter. You can use shop bought butter, but where's the fun in that? Pour some cream in a jar and start shaking. Then again, realize you don't need to do the whole artisanal thing today and get out your stand mixer. Let it go at full speed until the buttermilk and butter start to split. Then drape your mixer with a tea towel as if you're performing the world's most buttery magic trick. Let it go for about 30 seconds more and then get out your freshly made butter. Give it a knead and ice water to get the last bits of whey out and done. You've just made butter. Take 215 grams, the same amount as our shell paste, and melt it au bain marie. Once the butter is melted, add in the shell paste and mix with nothing other than a tiny whisk. Never mind this tiny whisk, we have an even tinier whisk, which is automatically better. Keep this on gentle heat for half an hour so the butter and prawn shells can get to know each other. Don't worry about the butter burning, as long as there's enough water in the lower pot, that won't happen. Once our butter and shells have gotten properly acquainted, we're going to sieve out our butter using a chinois. If you don't have this or some other form of fine sieve, you can use muslin cloth. We just don't want any prawn bits in our butter. When the butter has solidified in the fridge, you can flip it over on a piece of paper, so it will look cool and Instagrammable. But be aware that this might fail horribly. Then refilm your closing shot with a much more manageable portion of butter. Now for the big question. Did this butter join the clean plate club? And of course it didn't. It's butter, we're not eating a block of butter. However, we can spread it on a little roll and confirm that once on a roll, this is a very strong applicant for the clean plate club. Imagine a butter roll, but it's oozing with umami. That's where this butter is. We cooked the meat of the prawns in this butter and it was absolutely amazing. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go get some tattoos.